Good evening, my name is Elliot Denham. I'm running for postgraduate officer. And I've also done my undergraduate studies at the University of Nottingham in architecture, and now I'm doing MSc Entrepreneurship. And what I find very interesting is that going from undergrad, undergrad to postgrad, um, the university shed a very different light on me. And, and also the students union, the things that are available to myself or made a, that, that I'm made aware of as a postgraduate without my undergraduate experience is something that definitely needs to be addressed. Um, so my manifesto is all about engaging undergrads with postgrads. Um, it's a very vague term, but basically the idea is that we are all human. We're not aliens as postgrads. Um, I have very similar interests to all of you. I have very similar career aspirations to all undergrads. And with that in mind, um, I can share a lot of knowledge and experience with uh, with undergrads, and I want to facilitate sustainable ne networks for them to come together, empower, and actually want to get involved more. I realise that was about a minute. Thank you. Okay, does anyone have any questions? One at the back, please, Jess. chances where I've been uh, talking with the, I mean, in front of media and directly. So, so far, my campaign is going in the, in the sense of I've been trying to contact societies, I've been in, in touch with the students, I'm focusing a lot on the online campaigning, especially through Twitter. So this is right now my, the main campaign is right now all about. So in a few days, uh, I will put a lot of effort into the physical campaigning as well. So this is just an hour of Thank Have we got any questions? Uh, Hello? Uh, okay, recently we had a major campaign come to campus called uh, Justice for Sanas. And this was based, uh, she was a postgraduate student studying at Leeds University. And her problem was that she didn't get any kind of support when her tutors were not uh, responsive. So, this is, I've spoken to a handful of postgraduate students myself and they said there's no kind of complaints procedure in place with them. It's the same for undergraduate dissertations when they're doing research, there's no complaints procedure in place. How would you address this? Um, who asked the question? Please, mate, can you please just summarise that? Because I, did, I didn't catch it fully. Can you summarise it again, please? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, we had a major campaign come to campus recently called Justice for Sanders, and the highlight of that was that there's no complaints procedure in place for supervised research, whether that be undergrad or postgrad. She was a postgrad, so that's why I'm posing the question to you. How would you kind of address that feature? Because it's very difficult to approach staff with a complaint about another staff member. But that complaints procedure definitely needs to be in place when they're not doing their job. Fantastic. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so this is something that I recognise and I actually can relate to myself. Um, I was sold one thing, which was this fancy glossed up course as a postgrad. And now here I am um, at 
three, four months into my course, and I'm finding myself that it's not actually all it will sort out to be in the first place. Um, so me personally, what I've done about it is I've actively pursued it because I'm that, um, I ha I've, I've got that go-getter personality to actually try and make a difference. Um, but that's not enough and I'm recognizing that. So I can relate to um, the campaign that you're, on, you're talking about. What I would, what I would want to make clear is that there, are, there is LCF and that's fantastic and there are various methods of dropping sessions that postgrads have access to at the moment. But I want to make it um, really clear to postgrads that if they're spending upwards of uh, up to £20,000 per year um, on a one year course, if not longer for PhDs, uh, uh, if not longer for uh, a two year master's course, then they really need to make sure that it is their course and that they're in getting the full benefits out of it. Um, with that in mind, all of the all of the students in their introductory packs and things like that and introductory lectures, they need to know all the procedures, what's in place, and also what other um, facilities or systems are in place to complement, uh, in addition to complement the LCF, um, such as more dropping sessions, more availability of tutors, who they can speak to if the tutors aren't available, and things like that. Thank you for asking for this question. Uh, Justice for Sana, if this specific uh, issue is concerned, uh, the first thing I will make sure if this is like one uh, separate issue or it's like a issue which is affecting uh, the whole uh, student population in general. And other thing, is it like just one specific university issue or it's like something which will affect the University of Nottingham uh, students as well. I mean, I want to make sure that if this issue is just specific to one university, or it has any relevance towards uh, this, this university. And if this has any uh, relevance in terms of policy, in terms of any uh, procedure issue, then we will try to make sure that at least our university should have the fair policies and smoother policies regarding any kind of, uh, I mean, so that no such issue can arise from this university in, in the similar manner. And for justice for Sana, we further have to look into this issue, what this all really is all about. Is this, yeah, this is all I have to say. Okay, thank you for that. Any more questions to Jess? So, postgrad fees suck, even more than undergraduate fees, um, particularly if you want to say do a master's. Now, I'm lucky enough to have done a four year undergraduate master's, so I get the full support of student loans. And I'm in a science subject. And now, I understand from a lot of other people that in humanities and arts, this is much harder to come across. Um, just wonder what your opinion on that is, what you do at a national level to try and lobby for better, um, better fee system for postgrads, and what you do to maybe lobby the university to expand four-year undergraduate courses to other subjects. If it's like a specific uh, funding issue, or then it can be uh, looked into uh, this matter, like. There is anything which can be done to support in terms of funding and this thing, we can do certainly something about it. And if there is anything uh, more from the educational point of view, certainly that thing can also be looked with, with regard to this thing. This is all I have to say about this step. Thanks for asking. Thank you. I was actually on an integrated master's course, so I was paying £3,000 around the three grand fees and then I changed um, to a, dropped down to a BSc and now I'm uh, following an MSc in, as I said, in entrepreneurship. Um, so I was on a similar, in a similar page sheet. These fees were a bit of a shock. However, there are a lot of things that I came across in my experience that actually were not made public. 
One thing, if I did my undergraduate at University of Nottingham in whatever field, I automatically get a 20% discount on my home fees, which is something that um, not only that I was made only aware about once I started, but also something that I had to query with the finance office. So, with that in mind, for both undergrads and postgrads, it needs to be made more clear the actual costs of the course. Uh, if you, if, when I did my architecture course, the cost of printing, model making, materials, very, very significant, not mentioned at all at a graduate open day. Why? Because the people selling you the course are the people who want you to be there. Um, they're going to be the staff, they're going to be the directors. What we really need, um, and this might not necessarily uh, be something that's going to uh, travel all the way through to a national level, but it can definitely start somewhere on a local level within the university, is the, option, uh, is the opportunity for prospective undergraduates and also prospective postgraduates um, to actually get honest information. Not necessarily relevant or timely information, because I know that lots of departments are very good at that, but honest information um, from existing students who can give real feedback on the expenses involved, as well as um, more details about the modules, and their opinion, and things like that. With, uh, with respect to this information, obviously it's uh, objective, but the, the candidates receiving that information would be aware of this. Your question. I think you are in have one. You would want to go in there first. And um, one of our <clears throat> listeners, Luke, has asked why are postgrad students treated like an isolated community? What the SU actually offers for postgrads, and what do you both propose to offer postgrads if you were to get them on? Okay, the postgraduate community is, is a tough one. Um, it's got this bubble around it, this glass ceiling, however you like to put it. But at the end of the day, they are their students, and as I said at the very beginning, they're entitled to, to just, they have exactly, or very similar interest to undergraduate students. In addition to being students at the University of Nottingham, or any university for that matter, they're entitled to all of the activities, um, sports and clubs that the, the, the student union societies put on. The problem, I think, that I've identified having spoken to many postgrads and also having been uh, president of a society two years running, is that the societies are not taught to, or there's not even a mention of uh, postgraduates in the training. Now, when you've got uh, a, a new sort of second year coming in as president or, uh, or basically taking, or a new committee taking charge, of, uh, of a society, it is overwhelming. They have a lot of forms to come up to fill out and things like that. But that's why, you know, when they're elected, they recognise that these are the things that are going to have to be in place in order to grow that society and get as many people involved. But it, there, it's um, that it's in their interest to get as many people involved, and it is also in the interest of the university to let the committees know that they need to facilitate some form of accommodation into their strategy their development and their growth to accommodate uh, postgraduate students, bearing in mind that postgraduate students have different demands on their time to many undergraduate students. Um, I would add to, I'd like to also add that simply because, because I'm a postgrad now, I feel like there's a glass wall between my undergrad self and my postgrad self. I get access to different information. The problem is not that everyone knows about nothing in the University. The problem is that no one knows about everything. So with more regular, structured, both informal and formal, facilitated and infacilitated events, I'm not sure if infacilitated is the word, then postgraduates will actually feel from day one like they want to get involved, like they are empowered to get involved, and with, as a result, with a solid start, you're going to make a very big difference, not just in week one, but in week 30, in week 20, 29, in week 42, and finally in week 51. Okay, and uh, Sarah. Uh, actually, uh, first thing I want to make clear that this union is for the postgraduates and for the undergraduate. It represents both of them, so there is no distinction between the postgrad and undergrads. There is, I mean, Due to some horror reasons, um, nothing has uh, this misconception has came into the mind of the postgrads 
that the union is most about uh, the undergraduates. To destroy this illusion and to destroy this uh, conception, what I am bringing forward is the postgraduate association. This is like my vision to bring into the union. I know there is a lot of uh, misconception also going around this uh, postgraduate uh, association concept. This is not something to disintegrate the undergraduate and postgraduate. This is something to bring, bring them together within the union so that everyone within the union uh, can have the fair representation. So that, uh, let me sorry, further clarify this thing. So right now, the postgraduate community itself is scattered and when they themselves are scattered, they cannot be sustainably connected with the uh, student union. And this also creates this uh, misconception that the union is for the undergraduates. So I will bring this association back into life and this uh, association will maybe you can uh, connect them with the education network and you can connect them uh, through by any means through faculty or by having uh, one representative from maybe boards and societies and this kind of things and having this, associ this association. First thing this associ association will do, it will connect all of them together. The second thing, it will connect the postgraduates with the undergraduates by bringing them together with the societies, sports clubs, and all these things. One thing I also am very passionate to talk about, I don't make any false promises. Yeah, just one second. I don't want to make any false promises because postgraduate lifestyle is totally different, undergraduate lifestyle is totally different. And if you talk with any postgraduate, they will be honest about, about this thing that they want to have their space while having uh, a common ground where they can stay together as well. So I will make sure that the postgraduate voice is heard uh, and uh, they remain connected together as well. So thank you so much. Okay, I think I just forgot what the question was. Uh, has anybody got any more questions? six weeks to get access to my lab, which I don't know would like be included on my student card. Um, it's kind of essential to get in there to do your work. Uh, yeah. No, I got this. Uh, the thing is, the, all these problems arise from only one person within the union being rep representative of 8,000 postgraduate students. So one person is not a superman. He cannot solve all the problems. Yes, he has a people supporting him. So as long as there is a community of people to support him in whatever capacity, we can have a stronger voice within the union. This is, uh, this is like uh, my um, plan is to have a stronger voice of the postgraduates within the union. Thank you for your question. Every single student in this uh, room and in this university has a very different experience. Oh, well, not very, but individual and unique and different um, experience to everyone else. So with that in mind, there's some fantastic things that are already going on in the university. There are some also things that, that in some schools or some departments that need improvement, some that others do very well. This is something that is an individual, um, is an individual sort of requirement. However, what I pledge is that if, if this is a serious issue and this is something that is more prevalent and, um, and actually needs addressing in terms of it's going to have a sustained impact in the future, then if, if you were, if you, now that you've had that experience, if you were willing, or students like yourself were willing 
to actually give feedback directly to the postgraduate officer in, in, um, in addition to your school or your course director, then when the new cohort come in, and as your PhD student, if you're willing to give your time and um, sort of your know-how and your experience, then that means that it's going to be that when they again become in the second year of their PhD or third year of their PhD, they're more likely going to want to give back, and um, you know what goes around comes around as such. So of course, there's some everyone's going to have their problems learning at the very beginning. Um, it, it might be specific to you, it might be specific to your department. But if you can empower the postgrads to rather than be like, okay, this is my issue and I'm just going to deal with it alone, to actually speak up and share it, then it's going to reduce the chances of that problem happening in the future. And that is how I answer that question. Okay, uh, right, we'll crack on. Any last questions? This will be the last one. Yeah, uh, as a postgraduate, they're like, I'm doing an MSc, but there are some things you don't get access to uh, unless you do a PhD. So there's MATLAB, and if you are on a PhD, you get that on your computer, you get it for free, but if you're doing an MSc, you don't get that. And there are, I'm sure there are other examples in different uh, schools across the campus. I just want to know, will you be like helping that out? Because it's really irritating if I want to do a lot of, because obviously we don't have many contact hours, so I want to do a lot of stuff off campus. Uh, and, but I can't do my work because I don't have the program back, but I've come in, it's kind of irritating. And it also applies to part-time students or people who drive in and come from like Derby. So just that, that, but as a question. Okay, uh, we'll stick quite closely to the question this yep. time, please. Most definitely um, a valid concern. I propose that there, there um, be some form of funding in available to postgrads with, within each postgraduate um, department or um, or course that uh, facilitates or can accommodate these demands. So it might not be that we need MATLAB or we need access to this or that resource. It might it's more of a uh, I propose a general fund which concerns like this, depending on departments, um, can make their mind up and, de and decide upon. I also want to make it more clear to postgrads that they don't have to wait till the LCF, which happens um, once or twice, or um, depending on the school, three times uh, per year. I would like to make it aware that if they have an issue, they can get it solved, or at least get it discussed, and a compromise can be made um, according to that personal um, inquiry. All this comes down to more allocation of funding. Uh, if there is funding coming from NUS or uh, there is, I mean, if there is any funding fight, so I'll make sure that the fund comes and it goes to where they are needed most uh, so that the future of this uh, postgraduate community and as well as undergraduates who are looking forward to come into the study of postgraduates, they can have, um, they can have a better future. Okay, thank you for that. One final question? No? Okay, well, uh, thank you both for your time. If you'd like to take the seats again.